Merry meet YouTubers. This is Lady Grave Dancer. And if you can't tell, I'm swinging. I am Tuesday's host here on Witches of the Moon. And this week's topic was on sacred space. Sacred space is for me, is a place where I can either meditate or practice magics. Right here is my outdoor circle. It's nine foot wide. And this is where I mostly meditate. And I do do rituals, but for the most part, since we've done this circle, it's more about meditating. I have consecrated the area, and it is a very sacred space to me. As you can see. Over there, I do, ha I do have all the elements. I have earth, air, fire, and water. For earth, I have a rose bush. For air, I have two angels with their wings. So you can hear the neighbor's kids playing. And at nighttime, their little um, statues that they're in front of, they light up. And over here I have the sun for fire. There's actually two little statues there for fire. Wow, the neighbors are not usually this loud. And over here at this time, I just have one little water ball. This is why I come out here at night <laughs> when there's nobody outside. But anyway, so this is one of my sacred spots. Again, for me, sacred area, sacred space is where you can meditate or practice magic. It's a place that is sacred to you. It can be all the way down to your bathtub. If that's a place where you're able to be calm and relax. <laughs> really? Really? I'm making a video. How funny of me to say calm and relax and then I get attacked. Can y'all stop? Can you stop? Anywhere that you can relax or practice magic, meditate, whatever sacred to you. Um, I've known. <laughs> now all three dogs are barking. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. If I came out here later when I usually come out to meditate or practice magic, you wouldn't be able to see because it's dark out here. And I kind of wanted y'all to see. I have an area in my office as well. I have an altar set up in the office and I keep salt water for cleansing. I keep an incense holder because I can't sage in the office, but I can burn certain incense in there. And uh, I keep things like that. I will show a little clip right now of my little altar. Lord. Okay. So here is the space at work. Right here is where I keep all my incense, extra candles, matches. And then this is my incense burner, what Ganesh, right there. And then I also have an elephant. It's actually a cone incense burner. And right now I have flowers in it. This is my salt water, which I use to keep the negativity. I refill it every week. My candle. And this right here, corn doll. I made it to help. Most of you know that we're in a not so safe office. And uh, me and my assistant both put our hair inside. And this is just to help keep us protected here. And then I have just a nice little piece of bark and a dead moth. I am big on putting dead animals on my altars. Insects and reptiles and things like that after they've dried out. It's something that is on all of my altars. So that is the altar here at work. So that was my little altar and that is where I go to either relax after someone's done yelled at me in the office or you know I, I cleanse the salt water once a week because I feel like it's absorbing all the negativity for the week at the office and I pour it out and I'll start a new week with fresh salt water. Also, the, uh, the most sacred place that I have is my bedroom. My bedroom is where I practice most of my magics. It's where I do most of my readings. It's where I do just about everything and that's where I keep all my witchy stuff. I did try to have a witch's room, which I now have an empty room because it just did not feel right. It did not feel like a sacred place. In my bedroom, anybody who's ever come to my house, to this house or the one we lived in before, will tell you that my bedroom has a whole different feel to it. You can feel the difference in the energy. And there's a lot of places in the house. Um, let me show you a little clip of my bedroom real quick. So this is my room. This is my main altar, which is just full of stuff. My altar has no particular order that it goes in. It's just where I practice magics and what feels good to me is what I have over there. 
Mm -hmm. And then over here is Hecate in all her glory. And this is my room. This is the most, I think, sacred space that I have because I do most of my magics like right here. Yep. So. So you got to see, you know, um, the altars that I have in my bedroom and my magical supplies. That, my bedroom is just... I just love my bedroom. I just can't even explain it. It's not even a fancy bed or anything like that, but it is very, very calming. The atmosphere is exactly where it needs to be. In the hallway here, and I'll show you a clip of that here in just a minute, that is my husband's sacred place because that is where he goes to pray, and it's also our ancestor altar. I don't connect with it like he does. He prays every day. He lights candles there every day, and he puts the candles out at night. And that's sacred to him because that's where he prays at. That's where he feels connected that's where with. he feels connected with his deity. And that's just his sacred place. And here's a little clip of that area. So this is my husband's area. I don't know how well you can see. Because it is dark in this hallway. And then pictures of people who have passed. are all around it. Jade. Everywhere I go, I swear. Let me see if you get a better view. his area and I understand why the, the area is very calming you could feel the energy in that area from what he's put into it and I want a dog oh my dogs I swear we got four now anyways <laughs> there is also you know other places that could be sacred to you like I said in a bathtub if that's where you feel is a very sacred place I know at the house I lived in before it was my bedroom and bathroom where I did everything and it was you could just feel it you just know it and you can just feel it and that's where I practice and that's where I meditate that's where I pray that's where everything happens and that's what makes it sacred for me now there are places that I think that we can make into sacred places at times if you will for instance if I'm having a bad morning in the morning and everything is just crazy as all heck and I drop all the kids off and I'm still just frustrated and I want to get rid of that before I go to work. I will totally stop my car, sit in my car, close my eyes, regulate the energy in my car. Sometimes I need it to be really quiet. Sometimes I can just turn on certain music. I'm very lucky that my car has MP3 players so I can pull up any song I want to whenever I need to. And I then make that area sacred for the time of calming me down to meditate, to do whatever it is to take me to get into that zone that I need to be in to go to work or go do whatever I need. I call that the temporary sacred place. I don't I don't know if that's the proper way, but that's what I call it. And you could do that just about anywhere. If I'm at a park, I will definitely radiate the energy where I'm meditating at and make the ball of energy around me anywhere from, you know, just right around me to five to ten feet around me and make that space sacred as I do my workings. And you can do that anywhere. But yes, even gardening. If you're, you know, if you're a garden person, I just made that one right over there. Let's see. And for the time that I was doing this and fixing this area up here last weekend, I don't know how well you can see it, but you know, while I fixed up that area, that's that space there became a sacred place because, I mean, I don't even remember doing and fixing that. I just I was in such a good place and so calming and I could just feel the energy that I was regulating and putting into the dirt and those two yellow flowers popped up the next day and I was like wow how beautiful definitely magical workings there so yeah I feel that the sacred place can be anywhere and anytime that you need it you can make it and it's very nice to have these permanent places at home so that's my um, take on sacred places and how I feel about it oh also my soap area just let me throw that out there real quick my soap room where I make all my soaps and bath bombs and stuff like that when I'm doing the um, magical soaps whether it be cleansing healing or bath bombs for relaxation those things the space then becomes sacred to me because I am conducting magic I'm putting intent into my soap making and I make the space fill it with the energy that it needs to and make it into a sacred place for a sacred place for me to practice my magics because um, practicing magic does also include making certain soaps for certain situations at least it is for me 
All right, guys. I think I'm gonna end this video now. I'm surrounded by dogs. Look at her. She's eating my plants. She's over there doing Lord knows what. Pug, what are you doing? What are you doing? Don't know, do you? Mm -mm. And then I got one behind me. So I'm going to end this video now and go play with my dogs a little bit and do what I got to do. Thanks for watching, guys. And say bye, Jade. Where are you? There you are. Bye, Jade. So thanks for watching. And I will see y'all next week. And as always, blessed be. Bye.